I couldn't have been a bigger dork in high school. You can destroy anything except the knife. I think nudity you don't need. From E! Entertainment Television, stay very far away. It is the award-winning Talk Soup back on the air. Check it out. Highlights of the talk shows. Greg Kinnear, <laughs> one more time with you to check out highlights of the talk shows. We are drunk with fatigue today. Already had to do an hour show, and now this, but show business. The countdown is on for the premiere of David Letterman's new talk show on CBS. Thursday, CBS This Morning continued their week-long promotional push for the big debut. That will be, is it this Monday night? Monday night. David Letterman himself sat down and fielded questions from Paula Zahn and the always astute Harry Smith. Harry wondered if David's old NBC fans will accept his new CBS format, and given the fact that they've said the show's not going to change, it was a perplexing question indeed. Take a look. Do you worry, do you worry that the people who got late night will get whatever you're going to do an hour earlier? Well, let me tell you something, Harry. I was there for 12 years and I still don't get it. So I, I, don't, think, uh, I don't think that's a problem. There's not much there to get. It's, it's me in a suit and uh, with peculiar looking hair, depending on the humidity. And we just, it's, we just try to do an amusing, silly uh, entertaining show. If we have a guest on, we want them to be interesting and entertaining. Everybody talks about it. it's this. It's so. It's David Letterman. You can't sort of see it in print any place without it says hip and it's you know and all of that other sort of stuff. So, would, are you concerned? Are you feeling pressure? No, I'm not feeling uh, pressure. Uh, please try to restrain yourself, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little no. too much enthusiasm in that question. Uh, I've been watching Mike Wallace. Uh, no, uh, you know, first of all, I, I never thought of myself as being hip. I, I mean, in high school, not that I'm not now, I, I couldn't have been a bigger dork in high school. And, and look at me now, I really haven't grown out of it that much, Harry. Uh, so I never considered myself to be hip. Uh, even if you want to apply that, and, I, and I'm not saying it ever applied, I don't think that that automatically eliminates uh, everybody who owns a television set. So I'm not worried. I think, I think a lot of the questions about uh, this program will be answered uh, early on. Yes, indeed. Other changes in store for the show. Paul Schaefer's band will now be called the CBS Orchestra, and Larry Bud Melman will now be referred to, because of some legal dealings here, Calvin DeForest. Okay. Why not? Tuesday on CBS This Morning, Garth Brooks is going to try and cheer up and explain why buying you CDs will totally ruin the music business for you, me, but most of all, him. Right now, we'd like to direct your attention to the verbal sparring match on Thursday's Jenny Jones. In the right corner was Mary Ellen, an admitted spoiled brat weighing in with a superiority complex and a tendency to criticize her friends. And the challenger here will be her own sister, Ruby, who admits to beating up Mary Ellen when they were children, but only when she really deserved a good whopping. Let's join the action ringside as the sisters discuss Mary Ellen's snobby attitude. She can't have a reasonable job. She can't wear reasonable clothes. She always has to look like she's on the upper side well, of town. Well, what's wrong with wanting to have better things and, well, and to better if yourself? If that's the way you want to be, why have a snotty attitude with everybody that right. doesn't? That's not in your class. So it's not so the clothing speak. thing. It's the attitude thing that bothers yeah, you. Yeah, she has she has a prissy snotty an attitude. Well, I have friends that we grew up in a pretty bad neighborhood, and all my friends you know, are, are lower than I mm -hmm. am, which, you know, the only reason, the only reason I say that is that I'm the only <laughs> one out of my whole class that I went to school with that graduated, that doesn't have a kid. Because you gave yours up for adoption, right? right. I'll have to make that's my better. To make she, yeah, she gave her child up for adoption so she could have a better life for herself and for my child so I wouldn't have to live the way that my child would have to be brought up the way I was brought up. How do you feel about the fact that she gave her child up? That's where it really went. She's a whore as far as I'm concerned. I told her that. I'll tell her that till the day I die. If you're woman enough to lay down, spread them legs and get pregnant, you ought to be willing enough to try to raise that child to the best of your ability instead of giving it to somebody. Me. Ah, yes. The miracle of Childbirth summarized with the enchanting words, if you're woman enough to lie down, spread them legs, and get pregnant, 
the snobby sister on the show went on to say that her other sister wears tattoos and, quote, only scum wear tattoos. Let's move on. Tuesday, Jenny Jones meets people who were abandoned by their spouses when they needed them most. One man was dumped by his wife after he was crippled in a serious car accident. Abandoned spouses Tuesday. Well, he hawk everything.